My name is Liv. I work as a nurse at the hospital. My husband Elijah and I are about to celebrate our fifth wedding anniversary. I work full time as a nurse and earn a decent income. However, two years ago, Elijah got into a dispute over a capital increase at the company, where he was on the verge of a promotion and ended up being fired. He then worked part time at the supermarket in a neighboring town until he became a full time employee six months ago. Although he became a full time employee, his monthly salary wasn't particularly high. And our life was far from affluent. Ever since Elijah was laid off, I've been supporting him with my sole income during the two-month period of his unemployment. Despite being the cause of his own dismissal, he never seemed to think he was at fault and continued his daily beer drinking habit without switching to low-alcohol beer. I've mentioned a few times to Elijah that I wanted to save some money and tighten our budget a bit. But he responded with an overly optimistic attitude, saying, "Live, you're earning enough, so there shouldn't be a problem, right? We even have some savings as a couple. We thought our savings as a couple were still there. It's true that we had some savings, but that was a few years ago. We used most of our savings as a down payment for our house, which we built one year after getting married. We still have over 25 years left on the mortgage. That's when Elijah got into trouble at work and got fired." Honestly, I became anxious about our future as a couple, but Elijah assumed that I, being a nurse, would continue to earn money, and he continued his unchanged lifestyle. Now he has become an employee, and although his salary isn't high, he receives a certain fixed income. Lately, I've also been leading a somewhat settled daily life. One day during my break at work, I opened my smartphone and received a message from Elijah. Mom fell down the stairs and got injured. It's going to be difficult for her to live a normal life for a while. Worried, I called my mother-in-law. To my surprise, she scolded me, saying, "What are you calling for? If you're really concerned, come and see for yourself." It seems that the message had also reached Elijah because when I returned home, he gave me a severe scolding. So you called my mother, huh? If you were a normal daughter-in-law, you would have gone to check on her immediately. Which is more important, your job or your duty as a daughter-in-law? I thought it wasn't a life-threatening situation, but there was no point in arguing with Elijah at times like this. So I apologized sincerely. I'm sorry. I have a day off tomorrow, so I'll go and check on your mother. Of course you will. Take care of her daily needs, okay? He said. Who does he think he is? If he's going to say that, why doesn't he take care of her himself? While I had those thoughts, I reluctantly accepted Elijah's suggestion. The next day, when I went to my mother-in-law's house, a caregiver was there. Seems like if she applies, she could get herself a caregiver for free while her leg gets better. Even when I visited the house, she said, "I don't need your help. A kind caregiver is here for me," and promptly kicked me out. Moreover, it seemed that Elijah knew a caregiver had been coming. When I told Elijah, "Well, then I guess I shouldn't have come," he replied. It's obvious that I wanted my concerns to be understood by my mother. That's where you fall short. Nis' words hurt me, and I cursed. Frustrated by Elijah's remark, I couldn't help but get angry. Stop saying whatever you want. I have a job too. Do you know how I felt when you quit your job without consulting me? I said angrily. I shouted at him, and he just replied, "What are you so angry about?" Then he went back to his room. From the next day on, Elijah started treating me like I was invisible and began visiting my mother-in-law's house frequently. He would come straight home on work days, but on his days off, he would go to my mother-in-law's house every day. Being at home meant that I asked him to help out around the house, so I guess he thought it was easier to escape to my mother-in-law's house where a caregiver was present. After enduring such a life for about three months, one day Elijah, who had been practically ignoring me every day, suddenly approached me as if nothing had happened. "Liv, when are you going to quit your current job?" he asked. "Quit my job?" I was surprised because I had never discussed quitting my job before. I've never mentioned anything about quitting my job, have I? I actually like my current job, and honestly, I haven't even thought about quitting. I objected. But you can't keep doing it forever, can you? Besides, my mom is in the condition she is now. If she needs more and more care, it will be up to you, Liv, to take care of her. He spoke as if it was natural to care for her all the time. Hold on a second. We never talked about that. Besides, 
You said I would never be asked to take care of your mother. It was a promise we made before we got married, I replied. Since I loved my job, I told him at the time that I didn't want to be a full-time housewife, or living with my parents would be difficult for me. In response, Elijah said, I would never force you live to do something you don't want to do for my family. I know you love your current job, and I'm fine with you working as much as you want, so I want you to marry me. That's what he said. Were those words back then just lies? I said it loudly, and he replied, I didn't expect my mom to get injured, so it can't be helped. Or what? Should I quit my job and take care of my mom? Is that what you want? Are you okay with having to support me and my mom? He asked indignantly. That's a different story, isn't it? Besides, if I quit my job, our finances will be tight. It's impossible, I defended myself. Honestly, I make more money than Elijah, and it would be easier if he'd quit his job instead of me quitting mine. But even during his unemployment period, Elijah had such an arrogant attitude. When it comes to quitting my job and taking care of my mother-in-law, he might start saying things like, I'm taking care of my mother, unlike you. It's harder than work, you know. Show some respect. If you don't want it that way, then let's get a divorce, he finished. I was getting frustrated, not knowing what to do, and I lost for words. What do you mean? Are you serious? I asked, and Elijah smiled and added, I don't have confidence in continuing with a wife who can't value my family. I'm seriously considering divorce. Hold on a second. We don't have to jump straight to divorce. If we think it through, there might be a better solution. When I said that, Elijah replied, then figure something out with your job. You don't have to quit, just reduce your hours or something. For the sake of my mother, you should fulfill your role as a proper wife, he shouted at me. Okay, calm down, let's talk it through again, I said, and we set up a calm discussion. To be honest, I was prepared for divorce, even if it meant getting a divorce. But I really love this home we built after getting married. Having a home of our own after marriage had always been a dream and it was a house I had proudly put my own preferences into. So I didn't want to let go of this house. It was a comfortable home filled with things I loved. Furthermore, it had only been the fifth year of our marriage. With my husband, is it really okay to easily get a divorce over something like this? That's what I thought, and reluctantly, I decided to accept Elijah's suggestion. I've been working full-time five days a week, but now I reduced it to four days a week. I also changed my working hours to part-time instead of full-time. My co-workers expressed their disappointment, but the one most disappointed was myself. I had to distance myself from a job I loved, but in order to maintain my relationship with my husband, I had to endure this. With that determination, I started supporting my mother-in-law's life. After that, I began visiting my mother-in-law's house, and from the first day, her attitude was terrible probably because the caregivers stopped coming. As soon as I started coming, my mother-in-law kept complaining to me saying, you still can't do anything. The food isn't even tasty. Do you really have the intention to support me? She continued to criticize me despite my earnest efforts to take care of her. Occasionally when my husband visited my mother-in-law's house after work, he would laugh together with my mother-in-law while I desperately took care of her. You are really clumsy, aren't you? Did I marry the wrong wife? Sorry, Mom, for this useless daughter-in-law, he said, and they both laughed heartily. I was sacrificing my beloved job to do all this, and yet I thought that if I returned, it would only come back at me multiple times. It was evident to me, so I didn't say anything in return. One day, something happened. My mother-in-law was taking a nap in the living room, so I decided to clean her bedroom, which I hadn't done in a while. As I entered the room, I noticed some documents placed casually on a small desk. Although I thought I shouldn't look at them, my curiosity got the better of me, and I couldn't help but take a peek. To my surprise, I found out that my mother-in-law's legs had already recovered considerably, and she could live a normal life. The documents indicated that as a result, the contract with the caregiver, who had been dispatched free of charge, would end at the end of last month. What's this? What does it mean? I resented. My husband and mother-in-law said to me, We can't trouble others, your family, so show some care. But in reality, it wasn't for such a noble reason. It was simply because they couldn't receive a free caregiver anymore, so they were looking for a replacement housekeeper. What is this? I'm not just a housekeeper. 
I continued to be outraged. At that moment, I felt something snap inside me. What had I been working so hard for until now? It felt like everything had become pointless. My mother-in-law had pretended her legs were still not healed just to keep me doing chores for her, and my husband must have known that, which is why he wanted me to quit my job as soon as possible. Thinking about that, everything seemed so absurd. I suddenly remembered when my husband mentioned wanting a divorce, and so I made sure to withdraw exactly half the money from our joint account and transferred it to my own. Unfortunately, today my husband is coming home to his mother's house. I decided to make the final dinner an exceptionally lavish one, so I went shopping and returned to my mother-in-law's house. When I returned, my mother-in-law had already woken up from her nap. Where were you, leaving your disabled mother-in-law behind and going out like that? She said with a complaint, even though she had already recovered. While thinking that, I simply smiled and said, I went out to buy ingredients for dinner. My mother-in-law rambled, but I ignored it all and started preparing dinner. I decided to make my husband's favorite beef stew. A few hours later, my husband returned from work. Ah, uh, I'm tired. Is it beef stew today? Fantastic, he said happily as he took his seat. I served dinner in front of my mother-in-law and husband. It looks quite rich. I wonder if it really tastes delicious, my husband said to my mother-in-law. Well, it's really too decent compared to her usual repertoire. Just give it a try, Mom. They were so disrespectful. But knowing that this was the last time, I naturally felt more relaxed. Can I say something? I asked. As I was about to start the conversation, my husband interrupted me. Liv, starting from next month, we'll be living in this house with my mom. Huh? No way, I exclaimed. Considering mom's condition, it would be reassuring to live together, right? He continued. It's a waste to just keep the house where we still have a mortgage, so we decided to sell it and live with mom, he said calmly, matter-of-factly. I reached my breaking point and said, do as you please. I won't be living here, though. What are you saying? As my wife, you have to continue to take care of my mom. He looked down on me and sneered. In return, I sneered back and said, wife, who are you talking about? We were getting a divorce, by the way. My husband was dumbfounded by the word divorce and my mother-in-law dropped the broccoli she was holding with her fork. To the bewildered pair, I explained, remember when you said you wanted a divorce? So let's get divorced. Oh, by the way, I made sure to take exactly half of our savings as well. I'll pack up the house tomorrow and go back to my parents. Well done saying that, I took off my apron and started preparing to leave. Then my husband suddenly shouted, wait a minute, it's terrible for you to decide on your own like that. Decide on my own without permission. Who is the one who first mentioned wanting a divorce? Besides, it was you who said we can't continue as a married couple, right? I was freaking out. As I said that, my husband turned pale and hung his head. But that doesn't mean you'd have to rush into this. Are you planning to abandon me even with my leg condition? My mother-in-law intervened. Since my mother-in-law said it from the side, I asked directly, Your leg is healed, right? Huh? My mother-in-law froze in response to my unexpected statement. I happened to see some documents in your room. Mother-in-law, it seems your leg has improved a lot. That's good news, I continued. As I said that, my mother-in-law's face gradually turned pale. Please, Liv, I was wrong. Please forgive me, my husband pleaded multiple times. But I said goodbye and I left my mother-in-law's house. With my legs as they were, I headed to the house where my husband and I had been living. I packed all the belongings and loaded them into the car, heading towards my parents' house. This house, which I had never wanted to let go of, somehow didn't seem so important anymore. It felt like a betrayal even though we had built it with hopes for the future. Such painful feelings overwhelmed me. Towards the end, I had to spend more time at my mother-in-law's house, so perhaps it was inevitable that my attachments to our home had diminished. Is it okay to feel that way? With those thoughts in mind, I returned to my parents' house. Even after returning home, I received numerous calls from my husband and mother-in-law, but I ignored them all. Through a lawyer, I only claimed half the amount from the sale of the house that my husband had sold. However, it seems that the amount was not as high as my husband had expected, and he appears to be living a desperate life every day. On the other hand, I was able to return to my beloved job full-time and found fulfillment in enjoying each day from now on. I want my work and my mind to stay with me despite the sudden return after my divorce.